Okay, everyone. We're going to get started with our program. My name is Leticia Costa. I'm director of the Subiendo Academy. We're very excited to welcome you here to the um, day three. This is our luncheon that we have, and it's a great opportunity for our students to get to, to network, and they've been given business cards, and I hope they're using them. Um, so table host, um, if you're with us, please encourage them to share their business cards with you and, and introduce themselves. And I really have been appreciative of walking around and hearing the great dialogue that's taking place. So thank you tremendously to our table hosts that have joined us today. If you wouldn't mind standing, I'd like to, to give you a round of applause from our students in the academy. Thank you. Thank you. We try to teach networking because we think it's a very vital skill for, for them to learn at an early age. And I think it's, it's one of our pillars here with the Subiano Academy. So students, um, great job in networking. And um, to kind of teach you how important networking is, you know, I, I met today's um, keynote speaker, Luis Patino, a couple years ago. Well, maybe it's been more than that now. I'm probably closer to five or six years at a networking event. And I told him what I did. And he said, that sounds like a terrific terrific program, sign me up, I will be there. And here we are, six years later, we have him as a keynote speaker, so we're very excited to have Luis join us all the way from California, though he's been, he left Austin not too long ago, so we're glad to have you back in our territory for, for a few days. So thank you, Luis, for being with us. To properly introduce our keynote speaker, I'd like to bring up Luis Alatore from Austin. So let's give Luis a round of applause as he comes and introduces our speaker. Thank you. Oh. All righty, so I am Luis. Um, I am from Team Bowls. Uh, okay, so, um, okay, I don't know. Okay, so Luis Batino, he is the president and general, general manager of Univision Media Group. Luis Batino is a seasoned media executive with experience managing large organizations, including broadcast television, radio, so digital media, experimental event management, and government relations. He currently serves as president and general manager of Univision Media Group in Los Angeles, which is where I was born, at Univision Communications, Inc., the, link, the leading media company serving Hispanic America, Univision owns and operates 128 local television and radio stations in major U.S. Hispanic markets in Puerto Rico. Uh, Patino is responsible for the day-to-day -day management of station operations, including ad sales, news production, consumer marketing, and promotions. Prior to, the, prior to this role, he served as senior vice president and regional manager of Univision Television Group overseeing general op operations for Univision TV and radio stations in San Francisco, Sacramento, Fresno, Bakesfield, Phoenix, Tucson, and San, San Antonio and Austin. Uh, so without further ado, please help me introduce Luis Patino. Thank you. Tocayo, Luis. Thank you very much. Thank you, Leticia. Hello, everybody. So first, I'd like to thank uh, Leticia. How about a big round of applause for her and all the hard work for allowing me uh, an excuse to travel back to Austin, which is always great whenever I can find an excuse to get back here. Um, as we mentioned, um, there's no clicker, right? I'm going to have to do it. No clicker? OK. Um, as Leticia mentioned, I did most recently move from Austin to uh, Los Angeles, where I was born. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about moving today. We're going to talk a little bit about leaving the nest and a few things that uh, I've been able to accumulate in my now almost 20 year career in media. Um, media that has changed quite a bit, right? Even just in your lifetimes, think about how you used to watch television or listen to the radio and how you do it now. A lot has changed. And that's gonna become really important as you guys move on in your lives and in your work careers because everything is changing, right? Think about people who are or were taxi drivers and now with the Uber 
economy that is out there, right? Think about all these different industries that you're gonna to start to learn about and you're gonna to start to focus on that are changing at such a rapid pace that you have to continue to evolve yourselves. That's why I think this Subiendo program is so amazing. I hope you guys realize that you are so fortunate and um, I understand that you guys all worked extremely hard to be here and that you are top of your class and you should be so very proud and do not take it for granted. Um, having traveled the entire country and spoken at a lot of universities, I can tell you there is very few, if any, programs like the Subiendo program. 80 students from all over Texas, every single city imaginable within the state of Texas, um, and all of you here for almost a week, just able to concentrate on learning, on really learning, maybe having a little bit of fun, right, from what I hear? They don't let you have fun? No, <laughs> Leticia, they gotta have some fun. So I think it's an amazing program. Uh, you should all be extremely proud from what I understand. And I'll just ask the question, how many of you are, are first generation college students? So first ones in your families to go to, the, to, go to um, college. Wow, that's amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, and I, you know, that tells you everything right there. And again, you should be so proud of yourselves. Pat yourselves on the back. Um, it's an amazing journey that you had ahead of, have ahead of you. And I'd like to walk you through my journey, if I, if I may. So the first thing that um, is important is just a little bit of background on me. So uh, I grew up in Los Angeles um, and lived most of my life there, went to school there, um, and then have traveled uh, mostly within California and within Texas, uh, and now back in California a 20-year career working for um, basically a television station group that I grew up watching. Who grew up watching Univision? Yeah? In your different cities, right? So if you're in, from San Antonio, it was KWEX, Channel 41, right? KWEX. So there's something very special about San Antonio. Who, who knows what is so special about San Antonio and the connection to Univision? Does anybody know? You what? Yes, but even, even more important, what, why do you think San Antonio is so significant? Not just to Univision, to the entire Spanish language media industry. Nice, nice. You knew that too? Yeah. yeah. So San Antonio is the birthplace. So in 1955, a gentleman by the name of Emilio Nicolás Sr., who's still alive, he lives in... Um, Almost Park in San Antonio. Emilio Nicolás Sr. started Univision in 1955. In 1955, for those of you that are my age in the room, there's not too many, but in 1955, you couldn't even speak Spanish. So if you got caught speaking Spanish in school, they would hit you with a ruler or they would charge you 50 cents, and that's what lunch cost. So think about that. When you hear about companies that are extremely innovative and new and doing amazing things, Univision was started under a really interesting social climate. It's a company that we like to say was always a purpose-driven company. Have you heard a little bit about that, right? You may want to work for a purpose-driven company. A lot of people, and they say that a lot of, just went, oh, there we go. A lot of millennials like to work for companies that have meaning, right? Where you're not just selling something or you're not just providing a service, but you are actually doing something to inform and empower the community. And that is a very special thing that I've been able to live and my colleagues, one of them who is here, who's from the Valley, Feli Garcia. Say hi to Feli back there in the corner. She, she handles all of our community outreach. Um, and it's the kind of work that she does in the community, making sure that our Hispanic community understands and knows what they need and that they get the information in their language and in culture. Um, so it's, it's been a wonderful 20-year career uh, where I've had the pleasure of being in San Antonio, the birthplace. I've had the pleasure of living and working here in Austin, um, in San Francisco, in San Diego, and now out of Los Angeles. Um, so you can see there my lovely family, um, 
The kids aren't that little anymore, but that's a picture of us in Austin, and now we live in Pasadena. That's my grungy uh, Austin to LA hipster look, <laughs> right? Um, so we move on to some of the life lessons. I had the great fortune of actually giving the commencement speech at my alma mater in Los Angeles. Um, and one of the things that I did is I just started thinking about what are some of the life lessons that I've been able to take away from this 20 year career, right? And one of the first ones that I thought of was family, right? How could you not think about your family, right? So when you, when you look up here, those, those, that's my mom and my dad who uh, happened to make it to the commencement speech um, that I gave, I think it was last summer. Um, a lot of students just like yourselves who were graduating from the School of Business and Economics at Cal State Los Angeles. Um, but it's your family. It's your family, it's the support and encouragement that will come from your parents that is fuel for the soul, right? Fuel so that you can always feel that there is always gonna be somebody that is by your side, right? Think of all the sacrifices that they've made for you. Think of all of those encouraging words and those days when you may be down and they are there to encourage you and to stand by your side, right? And it's not just in the good times, it's in the bad times. It's in the tough times, in those difficult times when you have to make really difficult decisions that I encourage you to always remember that your parents are gonna be there, whether it's your parents, an aunt, an uncle, a family member, whoever you have in your life that has been that mentor, that has been there by your side, don't forget about it because life gets so busy and we forget and sometimes I now live in the same city as my parents and sometimes days go by and I don't call. And then I call and mom picks up, not good. <laughs> you haven't called me in a week. What, what's going on, why don't you call, blah, 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 right? So we all get a little bit of that. But I just, I highly encourage you, do not forget it. Your lives are gonna get extremely busier. They're only gonna get busier. You think you're busy now? Wait a couple years. Don't forget about the people that have always been there, the people that will love you unconditionally, always. Number two, ignorance is bliss. Who's heard that before, right? So I, I use it in the spirit of being fearless, right? Right now you have the great fortune of not having that many responsibilities. Once you get married, once you have children, your decision-making process changes a little bit because you have so much more to lose, right? You've got a mortgage, you've got to pay the rent, you've got the kids' schools, you've got to pay for your car, you've got to pay for insurance, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. Right now, you have the great fortune of worrying about yourself. You can be a little selfish. You can worry about making sure that you are the best person you can possibly be at this point in your life. You can be fearless, and you can make sure that nothing, nothing is impossible, because it's not. Look at you here today. Would you two, three, four, five years ago have ever thought that you'd be sitting here um, at the Student Union on the University of Texas Austin campus at this amazing program? Some of you might not have ever thought that that was possible. Some of you, hopefully many of you, thought that it was. And that you could see the future even beyond this event. I'd love to someday, and so would Leticia, have one of you stand where I'm standing one day, giving this speech to a whole new cohort of students. What I can tell you from my career is that if you act as if, if other people's perception becomes a reality of you being able to be that person that you want to be, that executive, right? That architect, that engineer, that doctor, that lawyer, whatever it is, visualize it and you can make it happen. Be fearless. Let that ignorance turn you into a fearless person that goes after exactly what you want every day because nothing is unachievable. It really isn't. And anybody that you hang out with, or any friends, or any family members that try and pull you back, that try and tell you, you can't do that. Why are you gonna go to that school? You should stay here and go to the state school, or the city college, or blah, blah, blah. 
Get rid of that, right? You don't need to hang out with negative people. You want to hang out with positive people that are in your same trajectory, that want to see you do well, that want to see you get out of your comfort zone, because it's not easy. It's not easy to get out of your comfort zone. So leave the nest. How about this one? We heard of this one? Leave the nest. It's good for your soul, right? So leaving the nest, what does this mean? As a community, right? As diverse communities, multicultural communities, I know myself in my Hispanic community, I have a lot of family members, a lot of fellow cousins, friends, who have a hard time leaving the nest. They've had a hard time leaving the nest. And I can tell you that if you have the opportunity to leave home, to leave the city where you grew up and venture out, whether it's to UT Austin, whether it's to Harvard, whether it's to Stanford, to Yale, to Georgetown, to wherever, please take that opportunity. Please, I highly encourage you to not be bogged down by negativity or don't let your parents who love you so much, who love you so much, but sometimes their love gets in the way of good decision making. And a lot of us have heard stories of kids who get accepted to amazing universities, but they end up staying. They end up staying in the Valley, they end up staying in San Antonio, they end up staying in Kyle because they don't want to leave their parents or because their parents don't want them to leave the house. They want them to be close so that they can come home and eat dinner on the weekends, which is great. That's a loving parent, but you're not gonna give up amazing opportunities for that. So you have to be willing to leave the nest. I can tell you that the best thing that I ever did was to leave Los Angeles and to go venture and work at Univision in San Francisco. I didn't know anybody in San Francisco. I had one friend from grammar school and I hadn't seen him in years, but I took off. Ignorance is bliss. I was fearless. I said, you know what? I'm not leaving anything here. I'm going towards something. And I'm going to make something out of nothing. And I'm going to go and I'm going to take this opportunity and I'm going to turn it into something. And it was the best thing that I ever did. Because new cities, new experiences, they give you just that. They allow you to grow. They allow you to learn. They allow you to meet new people like you're meeting today. People that are different from you. And that's good. It's a good thing to meet people that are different from you, that look different, that speak different, that like different music, have different tastes, eat different food. It makes you so much more cultured and so much more ready for the real world. So again, I highly encourage all students, all employees, that if you have the opportunity, leave the nest. Don't be afraid. Your parents will get over it and they will accept it um, later on and they will realize that it was the best thing that you ever did. Who has that issue going on at their house right now? Yeah, it never fails. And it's a tough one, it's not an easy conversation, but I'm telling you, feel bold and feel empowered to know that you're doing the right thing. At the end, it will pay off. So this talks a little bit about um, a lot of us in this room. Um, I know certainly, you know, for me, we, we did not grow up in privileged households, but we are scrappy. You guys know what the word scrappy is, right? I think it's a good thing. We're scrappy. We may not have the resources, but we're resourceful, right? And I will always take somebody, I will always hire somebody that is resourceful, they may not have the best resume, they may not have graduated from the best schools, but if I could see that that person can figure things out that is smart enough to know that they don't have the resources but they will be resourceful to figure out how to get the job done, I'll hire that person nine times out of 10. Always, always. I want the person that's gonna figure it out, that's gonna be scrappy, that doesn't um, you know, worry about 
sort of the drama and the, the, the circumstance that just knows how to get the job done. And we, fortunately, because of our upbringings, we end up having to be that way. We end up having to be resourceful and scrappy and not worry about the resources that we don't have. So again, don't worry about what you don't have, especially in this day and age. There's so many resources out there for you to be able to figure things out. And that could be in anything. That could be in your schoolwork. That could be in your new job, right? Don't wait for things to be given to you. Make them happen on your own. Be resourceful. It's a huge attribute that people don't realize how critical it is in, in business. So, so this one is very personal to me, but it goes back to the leaving the nest. But it's really critical as you start your new jobs and that you start getting opportunities to potentially move, okay? So yes, moving sucks. Who's had to move in their lives? Pack up your bags, put them in boxes. I've had to move a lot, my family's had to move a lot, and it's no fun, right? It is no fun. But in life and in work, it's a great opportunity for you to move up. So for example, I would never have been able to get to where I am today had I not been willing to move, right? Had I started my career in one city, and stayed in that city in my particular field of media and television and radio, if you're willing to move to a smaller city, they'll give you a bigger opportunity because it's less risky, right? So think about it. If I grew up in LA and I started working in Los Angeles, the number one media market, the number one station for Univision, if that business, if that station in LA doesn't do well, the whole company fails. Were they gonna give me that opportunity to learn my way through in LA? No. So they said, we'll give you this opportunity to go run the little old station we're starting in Austin, Texas. You wanna do that? And I said, yes, sign me up. So I got the opportunity to come to Austin. From Austin, you do well, you, you're successful. Got the opportunity to go to San Antonio and I was willing to move again two years later, right? But all of these moves are not easy. It's easier to just stay back and say, nah, I'm good. I'll just stay here in Austin, keep doing my job, I'm fine. But if you want opportunities for growth, I'm telling you, the, your willingness or your being proactive about willing to move is a huge benefit. Especially in, in these economies, a lot of people right now, you can live in Austin and work and travel, right? It doesn't really matter almost where you live right now, but I'm telling you that if you are willing to move with your organization or your company, it will always be a benefit to you. I know it was for me. So the last one for today. This one is all about Keep learning and always stay curious, right? And I mentioned this one as a good segue to how I want to end our, our presentation today. And that is, if I wasn't always curious and always trying to figure out what's next, I would not be successful in my job. I'm in media, right? Think about it. But when I started, there was a television and some people watched it with bunny ears over the air and some people watched it on cable. Now, very few people watch it this way. People are canceling their cable and they're watching it where? Uh -huh. Oh, and by the way, are you watching the six o'clock news? Or are you watching Instagram, Snap, Facebook, digit, whatever is digital, Netflix, Hulu, Spotify, Pandora? I mean, the options and the amount of media and competition that is out there is amazing. So whatever you end up doing, again, whether it's engineering, whether it's nursing, whether you always want to stay on top of the latest trends, you always want to stay curious, and you always want to be constantly learning, right? If I had the time, man, I'd come back to school and hang out with you guys because I want to learn, and I want to know how you guys are consuming media because my whole industry is dependent on you guys still consuming my product 
And my product is content. It's television content, it's news, it's music. And I need to make sure that I stay relevant and up to date with everything that is going on. So always stay curious, especially once you get into a particular industry, and make sure that you're staying up with the trends and that you're, you're always on the side of innovation. It's so critically important. So that's, that's number six. Um, you know, what I'd really like to leave you with is, is just some words of, of encouragement for what I think is an amazing time in all of our lives. I think that as I sit here and I look around the room and I see your faces and I see where you come from and all that you have accomplished, I cannot stop to think about how privileged and how fortunate people like myself are because you're gonna be the next generation of leaders, okay? And there's a lot of baggage that comes with being a leader. It's important, accept it and embrace it because we need more leaders. We need more people like you who are out there encouraging their peers and everybody to come along for the ride. We want more people graduating from the university. We want more people, it's, it, think of it as a trickle down effect, right? You hear a lot of the national narrative around what is happening with diverse communities, with Latinos, with African Americans, and sometimes the narrative out there is not that nice. Sometimes it's a little mean, and that's the way life can be. But it's really up to you to show that that is not the reality. The reality is that we have 80 amazing students at the University of Texas who are learning how to be great leaders. The reality is that we have um, a Hispanic community that is graduating from universities at a higher rate than ever before. And I've seen it. I've seen it when I've had the opportunity to speak at universities. I see that we are starting businesses, all of us, at a higher rate than ever before. We are entrepreneurial. We are becoming lawyers, doctors, engineers, um, Hollywood directors, movie stars. Uh, look at the number one song this past summer, not this summer, but last summer, the whole Despacito effect. They gave it a name. It was called the Despacito Summer. Look what's happening right now with Jay Balvin and all these other musicians. I mean, la Latino music could not be hotter. So I think you guys have a huge opportunity to lead and to be leaders, especially in a state that really needs you. This is a state that right now has so much to offer and you have so much to offer this state and this country. So I encourage you to take that leadership position, go back to the cities where you live and bring people along with you, right? You guys are so fortunate. Take everything that you learned today, everything that you learned this week and share it and bring people along for the ride. Leticia, I don't know if we have any uh, time for questions. Um, I would love to take some if we're okay with that, okay? Students, do you have any questions? You can line up at the mic. And be sure to state your name first, please. Hi, my name is Angelica and I'm from Brownsville. And I don't really have a question, but I just wanted to thank you so much for your speech because you definitely pointed out some very good things, like how you were saying that many of her parents just kind of cages from going far out because that's yeah. definitely what's happening with me and my parents. They're like, oh, no te vayas. Yeah. Because it, it's like, because I do want to come. She said, no te vayas. No te vayas. <laughs> Mijita, no te vayas. Because yeah. I told them, I'm like, oh, I want to go to Austin. And they're like, no, it's so far away. Because I live in Brownsville, like at the very top. Austin, tip. so far from Brownsville, right? <laughs> yeah, it's far. I know. It is far. But you definitely said that, and then you also pointed out how not all of us were privileged enough to have educated parents. Right. And yeah, that's pretty much yeah. everything I wanted to say. Thank you so much, because sure. those are very important. If, if, if nothing else, if one of you is able to go home and have that tough conversation and convince your parents 
that you can go to the University of Texas at Austin, that you can go to Boston University, that you can go and leave the nest, please send me an email. Please, Leticia, give them all my email. I want to know because you have no idea. That will have made everything worth it for me if even just one of you is able to convince your parents that that's the right thing to do, if it's the right thing to do. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi, um, my name is Kevin Garcia, and um, my question for you was, when you, when you go through struggles or when you fail, when you failed, how, how did you rebound? Because I know a few people just get up and they're like, oh, you know what, it happened, whatever. But I want to I wanna understand a different perspective, if there is one. So I used to have a boss that would say, I, I have no problem with failing, just fail fast. Right? You guys get that? Right? So there's nothing wrong with failing. In fact, most people will tell you if you want to be an innovator, a creator, right? One of these persons that starts a new business, an entrepreneur, failure is part of it. In fact, failure is a good part of it because it teaches you about some of the mistakes that you made along the way. Right? You just don't want to do it too many times. So you want to learn from that failure. And you do, you want to lift yourself up, dust it off, and say, you know what, it's a learning lesson. I figured it out, I failed over here, this is gonna help me to figure out how I do it better next time. So all you do is you use it as encouragement for the next time you're approached with that same situation or the same opportunity, right? But think of it that way. If you're gonna fail, fail fast and move on. I do have one more question, I don't wanna hog the mic, but... That's all right. Um, do you think, do you mind sharing with us one of your failures, like one of your major failures that comes to mind, if it's okay with you? There's a lot, there's a lot. Um, gosh, what would be, I've, ha I've got all these images running through my head now. I'm like, <laughs> failures, failures, failures. Um, what would be a good one? What would be a good one? So, okay. So one, there was a, an occasion where I felt like we needed to launch a new show in Los Angeles that was an entertainment show. And I got so excited and fired up about it that I convinced everybody around me that we should do it, that we should launch the show, spend the money, hire the people. And I sort of convinced myself, and I think it was more of a, like a pet project for me and I became so engulfed in trying to make it work. When it, the show actually aired and it came out, nobody really liked it and nobody watched it. And I kept pushing and pushing and saying, no, 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 it's gotta work, it's gotta work. And finally, I ended up having to cut the cord, but I didn't fail fast. I failed and I failed and I failed and I kept it going because I think it became a personal issue for me and I wanted to make sure that that show was successful. And what I realized there and what I learned is that it's not about me. It's not about what I want and what I want to impose on people. That in my business, when you're creating content, it's all about the consumer and what they want. And they told me from the very first time that that show aired that they didn't want it and I didn't listen. So that's one. Sure, sure. Hi, I'm Valentina Gonzalez, and um, I wanted to ask, do you feel that you carry a large responsibility in representing the Hispanic community? I do, I do. Um, I didn't used to, I, I, I sort of took it lightly, but now in my role, uh, you know, one of the great fortunes of working for a company like Univision is that you don't work for a TV company. You don't work for a radio station. You don't work for a, you know, a digital media company. You're really working to be the voice of the voiceless. At least that's the way I see it now, 20 years later, right? So yes, when you ask me, do I feel that burden? I do, because I realize the power that media has to influence people. The power that we have to encourage people to get out to vote, right? The power that we have to encourage people to 
to embrace higher education, to go to school, to stay in school, to care about health care, to care about becoming a U.S. citizen. All those things, we are very fortunate that we have that power of convening and of blasting our message out via our television and radio stations to convince people, to inform people, and to empower them. So with that, is there's huge responsibility that we don't take lightly. At least I don't anymore. Right? I don't see myself as just a media executive. I think we have to see ourselves as, as somebody who is out there to help and encourage and inform and empower our community. Absolutely. Thank you. Good question. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mirka Sosa, and um, I wanted to ask you how you found out that this was the career that you wanted to pursue and how you ended up acquiring a job at Univision. Yeah, so I, I think I always liked Hollywood, right? Like that whole Hollywood -y scene. I grew up in LA, but not in that part of town. But I, I liked watching movies, and I, liked, and I got stuck watching novellas with my mom. And I would watch a show. Do you, does anybody? You guys are way too young. Who remembers Siempre en Domingo? Anybody? Who? You were going to raise your hand back there. You don't want to age yourself or what? Come on. Oh, I didn't ask her her age, right? Siempre en Domingo? Come on. Right? So we used to call it Siempre es lo mismo because it kind of was. Every Sunday it was like kind of the same thing. So there I started watching and I started getting into, you know, sort of the music bands and the shows and probably for a split second I said, I kind of want to do that. Maybe I'll get into like acting or something. I never did any of that. But I always had that little, what do they call it in Spanish? La espinita, that chispa. So fast forward, life, 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 uh, college, and then I get a first job at a healthcare company, kind of like a Seton, working for their credit union. Boring. Does anybody work at a credit union here? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. It's like working at a bank, but more boring. Um, and so I was there, and luckily I had a really cool boss that would let me look at, there was these magazines, I don't think they exist anymore, but back then we actually used to look for jobs in the back of like trade magazines, and there was a magazine called Media Week, Ad Week, blah, blah, blah. Um, and the last three pages were job opportunities. So I started looking at that and started seeing about media opportunities, and then I saw one that said Univision San Francisco, sales assistant, and I circled it with a red pen, and I said, I'm gonna apply to this. I don't know what that is, I don't know what that job does, but I'm gonna go for it. Remember we talked about being fearless, and, not, and, and ignorance is bliss, totally ignorant. I didn't know what I was getting myself into. Ended up getting the job interview, went up to San Francisco, got the job, had no idea what I was gonna do, and here we are. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Stephanie Fabian, and my question is, what is the biggest obstacle you've encountered, and uh, what did you do to overcome that obstacle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, honestly, I'm, I'm gonna have to say moving. Moving, did you guys hear the question? What was the biggest obstacle, and what did I do to overcome the obstacle? And, and I think it was moving. It was hard, hard. I was 26 when I moved to San Francisco and literally packed up my little car with all my stuff and said, here we go. Um, and what did I do to overcome it? I, there's no secret sauce. It's, it's life. You just overcome it one day at a time. One day at a time knowing that every day is going to be better. Knowing that, that there's a means to the end, right? That you're doing it for a reason. That there is light at the end of the tunnel. And before you know it, one week passes, two week passes. You start, instead of talking to mom every day, you start talking once a week, right? And, and parents hopefully start to be more encouraging, right? You're gonna be fine, you're gonna be fine, you're gonna make it. Friends, you start to develop friends that are also in that same situation, who have moved maybe to that city. Um, but for me, moving was really tough because I left everybody family, 
cousins, friends. I knew nobody was starting fresh from scratch. Um, but again, it was the best thing I've ever done by far. Um, I'm Carla Perez, I'm from Mission, Texas, and my question was, in your speech you mentioned how in some cases Spanish may be uh, like looked down upon by the community, and um, I'm sure that now working for Univision it could only be an advantage, but I was wondering, um, like when you were growing up, did you ever grow to resent your heritage of being like faced with these obstacles, or were you always like proud of being Hispanic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so I can tell you, it's a great question, right? Great question because I, I think I have a unique perspective. So you all grew up in Texas, mostly, right? 98% of you, all your lives? Okay, so growing up in California, it's a little bit different. The social climate is a little bit different, okay? In California, it was really not frowned upon, okay? it was always a plus, right, to be bilingual, bicultural, okay? But I do remember growing up in California and I would meet people that didn't speak Spanish. And I remember my mother would actually criticize them. She'd be like, mira ese, ah, se cree muy gringo, right? No quiere hablar español. Like she thought it was purposeful, that they on purpose were not speaking Spanish. And I always found it, I kind of never really paid too much attention to it, so I got to Texas and I realized why. Because I realized the social climate that existed in the 50s and the 60s was such that parents and grandparents purposely didn't teach their kids Spanish out of fear of retribution, social retribution, right? right? We talked about that story. And so then I started to realize that, wow, there's this really interesting dynamic that depending on where you grew up, you have a different perspective. I remember growing up and at times being embarrassed if I was hanging out with my little buddies and my mom got there and she started speaking to me in Spanish. I'd be like, Mom, don't, don't speak to me in Spanish. Right? In front of, and my kids do that every once in a while. But it, it was never a, I'm embarrassed about it. It was more like, I don't want to be different. And at, you know, when you're 13, 14, the worst thing you can be is different. You want to be the same. So what, what I'll tell you is that there is nothing more beautiful than being bilingual and being a mixture of cultures because that is what we have become. Our country, you know, before we used to have a saying in marketing that, um, you know, it's called multicultural marketing, right? But now you're really marketing to a multicultural nation. Think of all your friends, right? And, and all the sort of the, the hodgepodge of beautiful cultures that are mixed within families and mixed households nowadays, right? And for those people who do not speak multiple languages, I think shame on them. We're one of the only countries in the world that, that doesn't speak multiple languages. Think of it that way. And think of all the beautiful opportunities that speaking not just English and Spanish, Throw in Mandarin, why not? Because if you grew up bilingual, in a way, that's one language. At least that's what we try and convince my daughter. So we made her take Mandarin. So we told her, you only speak one language, English and Spanish. You grew up speaking both, you're perfectly bilingual, take up a third. And that's the way they see it. So now, I think it's cool to speak a different language. Alamo Heights in San Antonio. You guys know that neighborhood, right? Kind of a she-she neighborhood, right? Very, very wealthy neighborhood. Well, guess what? The school in Alamo Heights is a full Spanish immersion school, and all the people that live in Alamo Heights fight for their kids to go to that school because they want their kids to speak perfect Spanish. And that is happening all over the country, by the way. So I would say embrace it, love it, be proud, because it's only a plus, and it will only help you. Yes. Hi, I'm Jesus Mesa, and I wanted to ask you what you think is the toughest challenge facing the Hispanic community, and like how can we overcome it? Sure, sure, sure. I, that's a great question. That'll be a good way to sort of end it all. Um, thank you. I don't. You don't need to stand there while I. Yeah. 
So really what his question is, is, is you know, what, what are the biggest things facing um, the Hispanic community? And I'll, I'll speak a little bit about that because that, that is my area of expertise. But what I really think it, is that we need a better national narrative, right? You guys know what I mean when I say that? It's kind of a big word, right? But basically, I don't know that we've done a good enough job, and we, the media, right, for starters, have done a good enough job of telling the stories of the 80 students that are in the Subiendo program at UT, for example. I don't know that we've done a good enough job of talking about how Hispanics are starting businesses at a higher rate than non-Hispanics all over the country, and that's driven by Latinas. I don't know that we've done enough jo uh, a good enough job of talking about how Hispanics are graduating at a higher rate than any other ethnicity in states like California and Texas and others. Right? The narrative that you hear on the news and on the media, um, unfortunately, many times is all about negativity. Right? It's, think, of, think of these words. I call it like the un. We're, we're, we're the UN. We're the uns. The uneducated, the underinsured, the unbanked, the underprivileged. And I think those days are over. Yes. Do we have challenges with, with health care? Do we have challenges with rising the rate of college-going students? Do we have some challenges? Yes. But we have some amazing stories to tell. And we all have to do a much better job of making sure that those stories get told. And I can tell you from our point of view, um, on the media side, we're trying to do that. We're trying to do a better job of elevating the stories of entrepreneurs, of business owners, of amazing people who have done amazing things just in this city and in the state. When you think about the Hispanic community and, and, I mean, just think of one of the names on your building. Who knows about Teresa Long? We're going to teach you about Teresa Long. Teresa Lozano Long. Have you guys heard of Lilas? There are some amazing women, some amazing Latino men who have done amazing things and who continue to do amazing things, starting with you all. So I think what we need to do, going back to your question, is do a better job of telling that story, of telling it proudly and boldly and fearlessly. Because how can you stand in a room like this with 80 of you and not think that our future is bright? Not think that we have everything, everything here to make things right and to make our community feel like they are important. To make our community know that they can do whatever they need to do, that they don't need to live in the shadows out of fear of whatever. And it's not even the politics. Forget about the politics. It's economics, right? It's economics. Hispanics are the fastest growing demographic in the country. If you don't have a strategy to reach out to this community, whether you're a politician or you're HEB, guess what? You're not going to be around. If you don't talk to our community, you're not going to be around. You're not going to be successful. You will fail as a politician, as a business, as whatever the case, as a university. So our community holds the destiny of states like Texas. It does. Austin ISD, seven out of every kids are Latino. And by the way, that's not just here in Texas. In LA, it's probably eight out of every 10. So where's the future going? But the future, it needs to be bright. And that's why I tell you, when you guys go back to your houses, to your cities, bring people with you. The people who are going down the wrong path, bring them with you. It's up to us as a community to bring people along for the ride. We want people graduating from school, getting a good education so that they can have everything that they need to be successful, so they can have health care, so they can have good jobs, so that they can hire people, so that it could be a trickle-down effect, and so that we can change the national narrative. So it's in your hands, and I feel confident that you can do it. So thank you very much.
Thank you. Thank you, Luis. We have a token of appreciation from our 20, 2018 class of Subiano. Would Amanda Bada come up and join us, please? From Brownsville. Thank you, Luis. Thank you. Well, this concludes our lunch program. I want to say thank you again to our table host for joining us and to all of our students for being here.